Hey guys, how are you? In this video, we're going to get into GPT-4. I'm going to take a look at it, give you my comments uh, from the point of view of somebody who's been coding since 1994 professionally. All right, let's jump in. GTP-4, a 29-year veteran developer comment. So I got this question put to me. Hi, Steph. Will GTP-4 destroy developer jobs? So the short answer is no. But, but GPT-4 represents the start of a next big thing in development, something I've seen a few times in my career. So let's go over some of the big points. Number one right here. Development is as much about configuration, design, making technology choices, as it is about writing code. So with GPT-4 and other AI completion tools, for sure. It's writing out code, it helps you to debug things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're a professional developer, you know that's just part of the equation. Point number two, some companies are banning developers from using GPT-4 because they don't want their code exposed to the AI. So I've heard this firsthand from people where some of the developers started using GPT-4 to start debugging some code and so forth but the company put a stop to it because they didn't want their proprietary code to be exposed to an AI. And I'm not sure if that is a real, a real threat or not. Some people have brought up this concern uh, previously. It is a consideration for sure. Point number three, you still need to ask the right questions, which means you need to know what you're doing. Now, in all the demos where you watch chat GPT or GPT-4, write out a bunch of code, you see people asking the right questions. They know what to do. So you got to be able to write those. You, you got to be able to ask the right questions. These questions are asked by people who clearly understand what they are doing. Again, that, that suggests, more than suggests, that you need a base of knowledge. Number four, I have seen this type of evolution before several times, where some new tech comes out and it shifts the type of development work we do as developer. Personally, I welcome this. Let me give you some examples. So, uh, number one, page-based web development with ASP, classic ASP, Microsoft put out this technology, replaces traditional CGI and Java servlet-based development. So, prior to ASP, which was a page-based way of building web apps, I won't get into details here, but what I'll just mention is that prior to that, using traditional CGI, Pro CGI, CC CGI, and servlets a little bit later on, uh, we would have to generate our view code, our HTML code would have to be created inside of the uh, programming language. So this broke a fundamental rule of proper software, software development where we were mixing our logic with our view code. So it became a real pain to edit views, to edit the pages, because everything was all intermingled and it was a big clump, a big mess. So when Microsoft came up with the active server page model, which everybody copied eventually, or quickly enough actually. So in the Java world, we had JSPs and so on. It changed the game. So I'll give you an example. So I was working on a project. Uh, this is back in maybe 97, 98, I forget, such a long time ago. And I was approached by a company who had built... A, uh, an app using Perl CGI. It was Perl CGI based. So they had hired another company to build this app. And after a year or so of development, the app was still extremely buggy, did not work. So they, in frustration, they contacted me and said, hey, can you fix this? So I went and I looked at the code base and the code base was all Perl CGI. It was a bloody mess. And uh, ASP had just come out within a year or so, maybe a year and a half or so. So I said, and it was quite, it was considered quite new. Still, the majority of people were doing traditional CGI-based programming. So I looked at this code base that another company I spent over a year working on. And I said, I will rebuild it from scratch with this new technology that is more productive. And I'll get it done in 30 days. So they, were, they were amazed. 30 days, that's impossible. Anyway, I did it. No problem. It was much more solid, no bugs, and I was able to build it from 30 days. Now, one of the reasons I was able to build it, rebuild it in 30 days, because I saw the model, right? 
there's a lot of back and forth when you're building a new app version one. So to copy something is a lot easier than to develop something from scratch uh, without having seen some previous iteration rather. But the page-based paradigm, which was brand new at the time, as we see in ASP and later on JSPs and other things, it was so f much more productive. It was an order of my, something that took them a year, I was able to do it in a month on my own. So did that kill all the programmer jobs? No, it killed the Perl CGI jobs <laughs> and the C CGI jobs, but the market was just beginning to explode. Example number two, CMS is replacing static page development. So a CMS is a content management system. The big ones are WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, and there are several others. Now, when CMS has started rolling out across the industry, all the people who were building traditional static HTML and CSS only pages started freaking out. Oh my God, we're going to lose our jobs because with a CMS, once it's set up and configured, users without any coding skills can just create new pages, add new documents, load up images, videos, you know, it's great. Again, um, it did change the face of development. We stopped building static pages in the traditional way and we started building a lot of uh, uh a lot of web pages that worked within the context of a CMS. So again, it just shifted the work over. It didn't replace and retire developers. Number three, web-based apps replacing thick client apps. So we're going to go back to uh, 95, 96. Now, prior to the web, people were building apps that ran on either Windows or Mac OS and a little bit of Linux. Now, web apps wasn't a thing. So for example, Windows VB6, VB5 and VB6 was huge. If you had to, you wanted to build an app for uh, a custom app for your company, you would do it in VB. Uh, now, that was basically totally eliminated within several years. Pew, and everybody went to web based, did it again. It killed the VB6 market and the thick client development market, although there are still people who do thick client development, but it didn't destroy development. It just shifted it again. Number four, smartphones changed the development market in two ways. Now, uh, more than two ways. People had to develop responsive websites. So when everybody started getting smartphones, iPhones, iPhones kicked it off really. Then everybody had to start, well, in terms of their web design, they had to develop responsive sites. Uh, then that caused, number point number two, that caused the rise of native app development. So First of all, that was for iOS and then Android. Uh, so with iOS, you had to learn Objective-C, learn the uh, smartphone API, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing, the equivalent in Android world with Java a little bit later on. So again, it didn't destroy development. It just created a new, uh, new areas in which we developed. With the rise of native development, it put even more of a stake into the heart of desktop and mobile and desktop development uh, thick clients because people were moving away from using their laptops necessarily to do a lot of browsing on the web and stuff and they were moving to their phones so that kind of changed things it changed the way we built sites and it put a, even a deeper stake into the heart of client thick client development uh, number three the above two plus the web basically took away a huge market share from thick client development okay i just covered that number four HTML5 replacing Flash development and other plugin-based platforms like Applets, Java Applets, Serverlight, and others. So in 2011 about, or 2010, something like that, uh, Flash was, prior to that, Flash was huge. From the 19, I say from 2002 or three or four, something like that, to, uh, well, actually earlier than that, in the 90s until about 2010, Flash development was huge. And the new technology came out, HTML5, and uh, with the help of Steve Jobs, Flash development disappeared. ActionScript was the language. It's no longer used at all. It's, that's gone to zero. So again, it killed one aspect of development, Flash, action scripting, or uh, using plugin-based technologies like Applets and Silverlight, etc., and Flash. Uh, but it didn't destroy developers. It just changed what we did and how we did it. So all those ActionScript developers, they were pissed. They were pissed, but... They just went on and did other things. So, what does this all mean? It means development. Well, what does it all mean in terms of 
GPT-4 and other AI, it means that development will be less tedious and more productive. With AI, you can speed up the process, uh, clean up your code much more quickly. So I would, if I were to guess, depending on the type of development you do, it will increase productivity by 30 to 50%. This is just a number I'm guesstimating here. It depends on the type of development, what level you're at, and so on. But it's going to just improve the way we write code, and ultimately, it will improve the quality of the code. Now, this, all these other developments I, I mentioned before, like page-based stuff and CMSs, that just improved the quality of websites. If you look at websites back in the early 90s, mid-90s, early 2000s, you look at the quality of those websites versus what you can get now, you can get much more much higher production, a much, more, a much higher quality website, much more productive developers today because of advanced technologies. So chat GPT or GPT4 or 5, whatever it is, whatever it gets to, and other AI tools are just a way of accelerating that. That's all. Again, let me emphasize, uh, writing the code is just part of the process. This is something, by the way, I've been saying for years. And what I've been saying is also that the less code you write, the better, because it's less buggy. So this is nothing new. We've been using libraries and templates for years. We've been using code completion software for years. This just takes it an extra notch or two. So I say bring on GPT-4. Don't worry about it. If your employer allows you to use it, use it to learn how to code. So I have a mentoring program. I'm adding an extra module to it now where I'm saying you should uh, use GT GPT-4 to continue to accelerate your learning of coding. I always, I've always i talked about using Google, using good sites to learn this stuff, going to the docs, but GPT-4 takes it to a new level where you can get to answers more quickly. That's the key. At the end of the day, all the software development that we do is just here to save us time. It allows us to do things we couldn't do before, but at the end of the day, we're just saving time. So GPT-4 and any other tools that come out, you should embrace them, learn them, get ahead of the curve, use them to save yourself time and to write better code ultimately. I hope that helps. Bye-bye. My name is Steph, and if you want to learn how to code like a professional, I invite you to take a look at UncleSteph.com. This is my very unique mentoring program and boot camp, which takes total beginners and turns them into pro coders in record time. You'll be leveraging my unique platform that allows you to learn at your own pace, but you still get the live support and coaching sessions. So it's kind of a nice hybrid between traditional education, in-classroom education, and you also have the flexibility of distance education. And you'll be learning from a veteran coder who's been coding professionally since 94, and somebody who has actually a highly experienced in the teaching field. I've been working with schools since 2011 to develop curriculum and content to teach people how to code in record time. If you're interested, take a look at the links below. And finally, link below, you can check out the Discord channel, over 3,000 members. I think it could be 3,500 members now. It's a great Discord channel, uh, well-moderated, uh, lots of people from all different levels in coding, very, uh, very fun uh, place to hang out with other people who are learning to develop and people who are working on projects. So check it out below the Code Long and Profit Discord channel. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.